as I said, my name is Boston Strumgut. I'm the general manager GRC Software Solutions, and I will be your facilitator today. Welcome to our second um, webinar, the first of a series and many more to come. Uh, we had our first one last week, and some of you may have attended that. Um, welcome to you attending our second one, and then also to all the new attendees. Um, today will be the last one for this year, and then later next year, um, later in January, we will start it up again, and we will cover topics um, uh, in terms of health and safety, in terms of risk management, um, in terms of compliance, uh, legal obligation alerts, and, and so forth. Uh, Last week, we had a discussion around uh, the Poppy Act and how you could incorporate it and how you can use the Lexus GRC solution to manage um, your uh, obligations. And then today, <clears throat> today Natasha is going to talk to us about using Lexus GRC for BCM uh, during the COVID-19 uh, time and uh, probably a time that's still going to be with us for quite some time. So, um, if I just look at uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna uh, cover today, or if I before I present uh, before I hand over to, to, to Natasha, I just want to go over a couple of house rules. Um, we've always got a few things that we just need to remind you of. First of all, please make sure that all mics are off. Uh, Sibu will normally um, make sure of that, but uh, if for some reason you do switch it on, just try and keep it uh, off. Uh, make sure it is off, um, uh, you know, if, if, if there's other disturbances, it sometimes makes it difficult for the presenter to come across and to, to be clear. So uh, for the duration of the webinar, keep it off. Um, Sibu will, will, as I said, will handle that. And then um, if you do have any questions or queries or uh, anything to, to be taken care of, um, then please use the chat function to talk or comment. Then there's a question and um, function at the bottom of your screens. If you do have any questions, um, we will allow for question and answers uh, right at the end, the last 10 minutes or so. Um, please post your questions under that section and not the chat uh, box, but rather the question and answer section. Um, and we will either answer during the session or we will um, take care of that right at the end when um, we can we can address that with with everybody, um, and then uh, during the course of the presentation, probably more towards the end, the last five minutes or so, five ten minutes, um, we will also run polls and um, uh, please answer those. It also gives us some indication of um, what your needs are, uh, whether we need to chat to you after this, and uh, if there's any other interests that you may have. So so please also answer those. Um, that will that'll greatly help us also uh, to be more effective after this, you know, and, and to do something about what we get out of this session. Um, and then maybe just quickly before Natasha start, a quick little bio um, on who she is and what she does. Uh, Natasha is one of our Lexus Nexus GRC um, uh, consultants. And she's primarily primarily responsible for implementation, training, and assistance consultation uh, with clients on the solutions, but also on the on the subject matter of compliance and risk. Then um, she's uh, Natasha has got about sixteen years um, um, of experience in the financial services sector, um, ho holding various management positions during that time. And Natasha is with Lexus Nexus now for approximately three to four years. Um, over the latter part of uh, Natasha's career, um, she developed a passion for um, risk and compliance, and she gained ex extensive knowledge in, in this area, also through further studies, and um, she also gained a lot of knowledge in terms of compliance risk analysis. And then in terms of her education, she seems to be quite well, well, quite well educated, um, she holds a Bachelor of Arts in and Postgraduate Law degree from Bits University. And then she's also done uh, certificates in short-term insurance with UNISA. And more recently, she's done the 
University of Cape Town's Compliance Management Certificate. Um, yeah, and that is that is uh, Natasha. She's quite passionate about the subject. She's really eager to to give advice and to she's very innovative when it comes to this and putting it around uh, uh, tools that clients and um, uh, users can um, then apply their day to day activities. So um, without further ado, uh, Natasha, over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Just you're still on mute. Natasha, you're still on mute. Thank you for that, Bosman. <laughs> thank you so much for that kind uh, introduction, uh, Bosman. Um, and thank you for everybody, uh, to everybody for joining us. Um, I know that it is that time of the year and we are looking forward um, to the holidays. So thank you so much for taking uh, the time out and, and coming out to, to have a look at um, our GRC solution and how um, you know this could be used practically uh, on your in your day-to-day -day environment in terms of managing your governance uh, risk and compliance. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go forward and I'm going to share uh, my uh, presentation. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through a short presentation and then I'm going to go on to our governance risk and compliance solution. And we are going to go through a practical example with regards to COVID-19. Okay, so let's begin with um, the presentation. I'm just going to get there. Let's move the screen down properly and begin with the presentation. So today's topic of um, today's topic of conversation, I suppose, because you guys will be talking to me over the chat line, is with respect to um, using the GRC tools for business continuity management, um, and specifically, what we're going to do today is that we're going to use a COVID example. The features and functionality with respect to the Lexus GRC system. And if you look at the products, you, uh, Bosman has showed you a short video with regards to, um, you know, all the um, the major key focus products um, that we have across Lexus Nexus. Today we will be concentrating on the Lexus GRC system, um, and in particular, we're going to move through Hira, incident management forms and checklists, as well as surveys. Um, so just to begin, um, I thought I would leave us um, with a, well, I would start with a small quote, um, and that is from Robert Burns with regards to um, that the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And I think for 2020, this is much of how everybody is feeling and was feeling at the beginning, and it probably still is feeling about the plans that we had for the beginning of the year and, and how we are feeling now. Um, but I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and if you know this little quote, you would know that it is about a little mouse whose house is crushed by a plow. However, you know, at the end of the day, the, the things that we can take away from this poem is that, number one, you are not alone. We are in a present situation, but this too will pass. And however fearful we may be, we can look forward uh, to the future. So let's look at the GRC system and let's look at how this system can actually assist us when everything um, kind of went topsy-turvy in March. So I'm certain for, for, for many people and in a lot of companies, um, you already had your business continuity uh, plans that were in place. I think though for most people, um, the thing that we didn't expect was um, our plans with respect to our tiers of people, um, our critical staff, et cetera, and our plans for example, um, moving premises to, um, to other locations, et cetera. And none of that really made sense because ultimately the president came on and he said, well, this is who your critical staff is gonna be. This is gonna be who is going to be able to work. And the majority of your staff um, or all of your staff is going to have to to go home. So that really just put a spin on things. And uh, I'm sure for a lot of people that was um, a, a sheer moment of panic to begin with. However, there were a lot of resources on the internet and LexisNexis was one of those uh, companies who came out right 
in the beginning and really made a difference in terms of making the COVID-19 regulations uh, free and available to everyone. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the COVID-19 regulations, because that's really where your starting point was. Who could go to work? Who couldn't go to work? Um, who could move freely around and what were the rules um, around those items? The next thing that struck me was a COVID-19 business continuity checklist. And this was also information that was um, shared with the public at large. Um, and how you could really take that information out and put it in the GRC uh, system in the form of um, a checklist. The hazard identification and risk assessment tool is really key. Um, and here I'm going to take you through actually um, identifying that COVID-19 uh, uh, risk as a biological hazard and then taking it through a risk assessment um, that, that can be rescheduled for assessment on, on a regular basis. There afterwards, I'm looking at surveys. Um, I'm looking at surveys in terms of gauging the mood of employees with respect to returning to work. Um, we seem to be there now, and, and, and that has happened a lot over the last few months as we come out of lockdown. Um, incident management, uh, getting back into business and having a COVID-19 case and how to manage that. Um, and lastly, the dashboards. So the ability to report and the ability to really hone in on where you need to trigger off and make, um, make decisions around your business. And, um, and that is going to be the end of the presentation. So um, without further ado, let's get back into it. And I'm now going to take you into our um, Lexus GRC system. So um, the first thing that we did was, um, is that we realized that we, we were not able to go to work. There were rules and there were regulations around it. Um, LexisNexis made uh, the regulations available. And what we've done in the GRC system is literally to open up a page on our GRC system and then provide that link through to the business. So you would have been able or you are able then to go into um, and click on this link, which will then take you into the COVID-19 research center, resource center, um, which was provided by LexisNexis. And this contained all the rules and all the regulations that you needed to in order for, for you to make those uh, quick snap decisions um, around um, the, the continuing of your business. Then afterwards, I am then able to go into the forms and checklists. And I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of information which came through from various sectors of the business. And this is one of the items that really struck uh, stuck out for me. It was um, a, a business continuity plan or a business continuity checklist. Um, and it was focused more around, um, you know, the, the, the items relating to, to what COVID-19 was about. So if you can see, it's, it, it's got items like identify an emergency coordinator and or team with defined roles and responsibility for prepared and preparedness and response planning. And the process planning should include input from labor representatives, identify essential employees and other critical inputs. And again, yeah, I would identify these essential employees and critical inputs in relation to the resources that were coming out um, from the COVID-19 resource center. Um, training and preparing ancillary staff, developing and planning for scenarios uh, likely to result in an increase or decrease in demand of your products and so on and so forth. Now, what I've done with this particular checklist is, is that I've taken it and have put it into um, the GRC forms and checklist module, module that is available. So the idea around this is that you could put it into a form and depending on the size of your organization, you could then take um, uh, this very uh, basic um, uh, checklist and you could then send it out to key personnel in your organization so that you could get responses back as regards to how many of these items and really get a sense of how much of this um, um, you know, you were ready for in terms of the business continuity management. Um, you would then get your answers back um, and you would then get a sense from the business as that we don't have an emergency coordinator, we need to get that done. Um, we're in progress in terms of preparing our ancillary staff, we've developed a plan and scenarios. And of course, depending on where you are, 
Um, you could do this on a daily basis if you needed to. You could do this on a weekly basis, just in terms of, of doing that critical um, uh, 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 sitting of your uh, uh, of key personnel in, in terms of how much of these items you were actually moving on a week by week or on a day to day basis. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to set it aside um, because we've looked at the regulations and we have now looked at a basic um, a checklist in terms of BCM uh, based on this pandemic or COVID-19 uh, scenario. Um, and then hopefully panic would have washed over me a little bit more and I can actually get into what the crux of the matter um, in respect to COVID-19 is. And this is really where I get to um, the hazards and the aspects and really breaking down what COVID-19 is and what it actually means to an organization. So the first thing you would see on the left hand side, and I've got a very, um, this is this is our sales demo. You can see I've got a very complex structure on my GRC system. So it really just caters for every organization. It affects the whole business, right? And we know that it is a hazard and we know that this is COVID-19. So under the hazard description, I didn't have any problem to try and get a definition as regards to what COVID-19 was. Um, I found this interesting in terms of the CO stands for Corona. The VI stands for virus and the D stands for disease. So we're looking at COVID-19. So the COVID-19 pandemic, also known as the coronavirus, is an ongoing pandemic of coronavirus diseases from 2019 and caused by the transmission of severe acute respiratory syndrome. And that's really just a very detailed description that I'm putting into the system. And I know that it is a biological hazard. Quite interestingly, I've actually needed to add this in onto my system, which is easy because I went onto the system and I've added it in on my back office, which is what the GRC system is also capable of. Because what we do is, is that we configure um, as and when the business needs or requires changes, we configure in the items that we need in order for the system to, to be logical and to make sense for us. Hazard and aspect has been identified. I now look at my aspect with regards to risk impacts. And here you can see I've already captured a risk impact. I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you exactly the detail that I've captured in this particular circumstance. All right. So certain information, and again, this comes down to the configuration of your business. So um, I'm using a basic example uh, that we have of our sales demo system. Um, you can see that um, my risk impact, my assessor facilitator, I've, I've appointed that as Bosman. Um, I've created my title, which is my COVID-19. I can put a full description in on this item again, if I so choose, I've done that before. And here I now start saying, okay, but where is the impact? I know that it's operational. I know that it's financial. I know it's occupational health and I know that it's safety. And it might be many more of those things as well. And those are the areas that I really need to identify um, because ultimately if I have key people in my organization, a different person obviously taking care of financial, occupational, etc., I need those people to, to, to put their financial lenses on this risk, their occupational health lenses on this risk and to make the right decisions around the triggers that need to be pulled um, in order for uh, this risk to move from a, 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 a red to an amber to and then to a green item. Um, at the instance, I'm saying that my risk impact, impact sorry, uh, assessment cycle is going to be weekly. And that means that I'm going to take this risk and I'm literally going to um, look at it on a weekly basis until such time as I'm satisfied with it. Um, under this particular item as well, um, remember we are LexisNexis, we do have that full library available. So the Disaster Management Act is something that I can immediately link to it. And on the top, if I look at my company strategy, I want to take this risk and I want to link it to a particular piece of legislation that I'm going to have available to me. And I'm also going to link it to specific um, strategic interests that may be impacted because of, um, because of this, um, this hazard. If I look at my item with regards to inherent risk, um, so I know it's almost certain. I know that it's catastrophic. I can't imagine that anyone else uh, in any organization has done anything but put it on its highest tier. And the exposure to this item is daily. Um, so immediately this risk impact is coming out high. I'm putting in the, the, the that it's a priority for me. I'm putting in the CEO as uh, in this instance, it's, it's one of our uh, former colleagues, Mr. Greg Brown. 
um, and um, I've put him down as um, as a person. But most most importantly, I think besides the name of the person is that I have put this under. Uh, the risk impact owner <laughs> is probably going to be the CEO, um, strictly speaking. So under the road notes and uh, rationale, um, I'm looking at COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'm looking at the uh, South African government restrictions on the movement of persons. And I'm looking at the disaster management act. These are just basics that I'm looking at. So um, again, I'm already calmed down a little bit more. I know exactly what it is that I'm dealing with. Um, I know the impact of it. I know how high risk rated it is. I'm looking at my legislation. Um, I've got this nice checklist that I've got on going on for business. So we know that there's something happening there in terms of some actions and some triggers that have been pulled. Um, and now I really need to start looking at controls. What do I have um, to curtail um, the situation? Um, and again, this is not advice from me or this is not advice um, from LexisNexis for, for, for that matter, but this is just um, an example of, of how some of the things have flowed out in various businesses um, from the time that um, we were informed of the lockdown. So I think one of the first things that happened was we need to get our people working. We need to get busy in remote working facilities. And this was really a control at the end of the day. Um, in order for us to control this hazard, we need to send our people home and we need to get them um, working as well in terms of putting in remote working facilities. So for me, the control description was business capable actions to deploy remote working capabilities to all employees of the business, uh, hardware and software deployment to all staff members lying for remote access working. Um, and that point, you can see that I've put it in, in planning and I've looked at it as a measurement that I was gonna look at daily because I couldn't imagine that it would be anything but that. Um, how much are we getting done? And initially I'm saying that that control was ineffective um, because ultimately it wasn't as if we could snap our fingers on day one and say, everybody go home and here's a laptop and here's uh, a computer and here's uh, data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it kind of happened in stages in terms of how those people could um, get home and get working and get secure access. Um, Greg Changelin is the IT tech head. Um, he was then appointed as the person who was going to ensure um, that this item um, was going to happen. And if he wasn't already informed, I would then be able to create a task and say to Greg, Greg, please, um, could you please ensure that um, um, 50 of our staff member who has been rated as critical staff members um, receive their remote access before anyone else does or however that um, worked in your business. Um, I did um, and you can put in as many controls as you want to, and th these were just examples, but it, but another one that came up very quickly was secure access of online facilities. Um, fraud was a massive issue during COVID-19 for the remote accesses, so this was also a very primary um, item that we then needed to have a look at. So then having a look at this risk assessment and why I said that we looked at this risk uh, assessment and we rescheduled it, as you can see, I can reschedule it here on my system on a weekly basis was because after all of the little things or the little controls or the, uh, as we started moving the needle um, a little bit more, we, 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 um, we managed to start moving um, from that red to that amber to that green item. And, but it was something that we needed to have a look at on a weekly basis. Um, so as an example here yeah, on this risk assessment, and I'm looking at residual risk assessment, one that I've already completed so that I don't bore you in terms of the, the, the clicking. Um, I have still, even though I'm looking at these controls, I know that I'm still very much in the red with regards to these items. I'm saying that it is still certain, it is still major, um, and then I'm rescheduling a, a, an assessment to, uh, to happen at uh, a later stage. Now, how do I move that dial? Um, so one of the things that I've done is, is that I know that I've done this item, which is the forms and the checklists. So the forms and the checklists have come in and said, well, um, if I look at this item with regards to identifying an emergency coordinator, I haven't even started that. So as much as I have these items with the tech guys going and the, 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 um, the, 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 the computers and the laptops going, etc., I haven't actually identified somebody to take this over. So that's one of the first things that I've done in terms of creating a task action on this uh, hazard um, and impact risk. Um, is that I created a task and on this task item, I've said 
um, I need to identify emergency coordinator. I've assigned it to 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 Ayanda. Um, I'm the person who's responsible. It's pending. It's audit. It's occupational health. Hi, and you see, I've just literally copied and pasted identify an emergency coordinator and or team with defined roles and I've put that into somebody's hands and I've said it needs to be done ASAP already by the next day. So this person would have then received an email from me to say, hey, you know what, please can you identify and attend to this item um, immediately and, uh, and, and please provide me feedback on this. This action plan will then go into a task uh, or task item or task schedule that I can then track on my Lexus GRC system to make sure that that actually moves. So let's just take a pause there um, because I've gone pretty fast um, through these items. Um, where I began was to say, we need to, to, to look at these resources. Um, let's get um, some information going out and getting information back to our business on our readiness and our checklist. Um, so that was also something that we did. And then we actually just went in practically to identify that risk. Um, and see what were some of the controls um, that we already had um, in the business. Um, and I'm going to come back to this item with regards um, to surveys um, at another time. But where I'm actually going to go in now is also say, well, you know, this is this is what we've practically done in terms of um, moving from um, one stage to another. Um, and now we're already in an environment of where we're starting to look at, um, well, um, you know, people coming back to work, et cetera, um, probably from next year. But that is something that you actually want to um, gauge from, um, it is something that you actually want to gauge from um, your wider employee audience. Um, and that's something that you can have a look at under your surveys module. Um, so under the surveys module, um, you would see that I have, and I'm going to just do that very quickly. I'm going to attach a survey that was created earlier, and that survey was in relation to the COVID-19 returning to work survey. Again, resources that um, in the circumstances I have picked up, um, you know, just uh, generally from the internet, but something that I actually saw and that I wanted to put into a tool and I want to actually put in, in, in a working format. So the Lexus GRC survey module would allow you then to um, pick up um, a survey, um, create a distribution list um, for your particular survey. You'd be allowed to create the questions um, on that particular survey. Uh, send it out to people within your organization and um, and receive your responses back. So for our purposes, and you can see these reports, these findings, related items and analysis, but for our circumstances, I just wanted to show you the idea of what this involves. So the simple questions like, are you looking forward to returning to work? If you have been working from home, would you prefer to continue doing so? Or do you have concerns about commuting to work? Okay. And this is something that you would just then receive responses from and you would be able to gauge from your employees as regards to what their sense is um, about coming back to work going forward. And then you can relook really at or reschedule um, doing this risk assessment and really start putting in the controls as regards to um, people coming back to work or where your next um, move needs to be um, around those particular items. Um, and just to show you on an end, I want to show you that um, you have a full audit trail with regards to this particular risk. So as much as you're going to go in and you're going to reschedule um, further assessments um, as more controls come into place, so you get a further sense with regards to your surveys. Um, as you get a further sense as regards to your forms and checklists, because you'll be sending that information out um, on a regular basis. And the nice thing about this is, is that you're going to keep the information um, in one place where it's going to be continually changing um, your past risk assessments. Is going to, you're going to see your past risk assessments. You're going to see your controls that have been changing. You're going to see whether those are partially effective and what's effective and how that has moved, you know, over the period. 
Um, and this is really going to get you, give you a sense of comfort, I think. And, and now the, 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 the discomfort that you have and the panic that you've had at the beginning is going to start to look as though you have things, you know, well underway um, and, and, and in control. So now people are back at work. What do you do? Um, if you have a situation with regards to a COVID-19 case, um, and do you currently have BCM tools? I'm just going to minimize this poll that I have coming through. So the next item that I then want to have a look at is with respect to an incident. And let me just find this particular item. Okay. Compliance, and we're going to go into incident management. And I'm just going to find that particular item. And I'm going to open that item in particular. Okay. So we're back at work and we have an incident with regards to um, COVID-19. So um, I'm going to have to log an incident because it was something that happened at work. This person was last at work. So I'm going to have to log an incident, but I'm also going to want to track it. Um, I'm also going to want to inform in contact persons and I'm also going to want to manage an item with respect to the risk. Um, and in particular, with regards to what are the protocols that I'm going to follow in office for a COVID-19 positive case. Um, so under your risk type, we're saying it's occupational health. I've logged it as an employee. And um, Lewis Hamilton, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but Lewis Hamilton has been tested positive for COVID-19. I'm sorry, that's not something that is funny, but um, Lewis Hamilton has been uh, tested positive for, for COVID-19 since his last F1 Grand Prix. So um, Lewis Hamilton in his location at the Lexus Nexus sales demo um, from the F1 Grand Prix, uh, the client uh, or rather the employee has tested uh, positive for COVID-19 and was last in the office on, on what particular day. Um, we can put up any photographs if we need to. Um, it's not necessary, obviously, in, in this particular case. Um, but the immediate causes is, is that an in-contact person to Mr. Hamilton tested positive for COVID-19. The employee thereafter tested negative for three further tests. However, a few days later, feeling mild symptoms, he tested positive. Incident level is level one or level four, depending on how your, your rating scale is. And we're saying that he is going to require medical treatment. Um, on that next item, is he an injured person? No, he isn't an injured person. Um, were there vehicles involved? Absolutely not. There was no vehicles involved. Um, was it security related? And I'm really just taking you through these items just to show you the diversity around a particular system that has more detail rather than less, um, which is also very helpful in terms of you being able to, 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 to capture out um, an incident. So when you look at these incidents as well, and you look at the items around um, an incident investigation, for example, um, I'm looking at an item with regards to an incident investigation. And under these investigation details, I can then start putting in um, full details with regards to when was it done? When was the investigation done? When was, did the investigation take place? Do I need to put in? Um, an investigation team. Um, how do I then uh, classify um, those particular items? Um, and if I then classify those particular items, did it require monetary treatment? Um, what is the productivity downtime um, for Mr. Lewis Hamilton uh, going to be? He's not going to be able to attend um, the Grand Prix um, next week. Um, they're going to have to put a replacement in. Um, what is going to be the travel costs? What is going to be um, a product loss or, or, or damage? So all of those items are items that you can pick off in terms of this incident uh, investigation. 
um, witnesses and testimonies, and this is an item that we can look at um, in a little bit more of a, a, a logic framework. But in these uh, circumstances, I would definitely look at putting in information with regards to more or further in contact people um, and really identifying those people who need to be informed with regards to um, the COVID-19 case. I can put in timelines with regards to how that has happened. I can put in costs with regards to it. Um, most importantly, I can link it to that COVID-19 risk as well that I've captured um, so that I can put that item down um, as a high priority um, and link all of the items in relation to, 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 um, to that COVID-19 um, risk so that I can actually see what the impact is um, on that particular incident. So in this circumstances, I can just click on this item and I can click on save as my COVID-19 risk. Um, and I can link this item to that risk so that at a later stage when I pull out my data um, on my interactive dashboards, then I can. And the same thing with regards to any surveys um, that I need to, to put out. And maybe that survey could be something as interesting as, um, have you been in contact um, with Mr. Lewis Hamilton? Um, uh, if so, if yes, um, please can you contact the following people? It could, it could be something as interesting as that. A form and a checklist is also something that you can do in terms of, of getting information out uh, to clients and asking them questions about um, how they feel, have they been in contact, do they have some symptoms, etc. So, so very, um, very good tools that, that can be easily used and manipulated for the purposes that you require, you know, throughout your business, continuity management and, and, and management of your uh, your risks on a high level. Um, so that is looking at, and again, just a quick summary of, of what we were doing, looking at um, your COVID-19 uh, resources, putting out a checklist to the business to gauge uh, readiness or preparedness, or, um, you know, what are the items that you have in place with regards to, to, um, to business continuity management. Um, capturing your risk in terms of um, in terms of the hire um, and doing a complete risk assessment together with your controls and your action plans. Action plans that can be easily referenced out, out to that forms and checklists and information that is coming out. Action plans that can be easily relatable to, to, to your surveys as well. Um, incident management that can be captured based on, on any type of, of incident, whether it is um, a health and safety or COVID-19 incident or whether it's something related to a security incident in your, in your, on your premises as well. So for the next few minutes, and I am nearly done um, with the presentation, I just want to take you through some of the information that we have in relation to our interactive dashboards. So this just needs to go away for a second. Here we go. So moving backwards from where we started, um, an incident manage log. On the left hand side, you will see that I've got locations on this incident management. You will see that I have these blocks. Um, and the blocks that I have on my Lexus GRC system is what we call our interactive dashboard. And the reason why we say it's interactive is because you can move the marks on um, your dashboard and it will give you further in and it will give you a full picture of information. So you would easily be able to click and link on information that you would find relevant or that you would want to hone in on or concentrate on. Um, in order for you to get a view of where you need to pull your triggers or where your areas of concentration need to be. So here's an example of what it would look like if I would look at information from Q3 of 2018. In my instance, I only want to look at the incident in relation to that December incident, which was captured. Um, so if I click it on, you would see that the information changes in relation only to the, um, the COVID-19 case. Um, and here you would see it, it would give me information as regards to what the cost is, where the location is, um, how long the incident has been opened, 
Um, and just further information, um, what's the injury loss time or injury frequency rates, if I was to capture those information, uh, medical treatment, who it was logged by, et cetera. And just to give you a sense of, of how that information would actually fit into all types of incidents. Um, I could, for example, look at something and say, all right, um, I just want to look at information in relation to um, my Alexis Nexus Durban office, for example, and I would be able to get that information out. So the idea around this as well is that I would be able to hone in on my um, COVID-19 cases and I would be able to get a true reflection of how that does have an impact on um, the situation. Excuse me. Um, I'm just going to pause for one second. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Just had a moment of sheer panic. Uh, <laughs> um, and the next item that I look at is hazards, aspects, and uh, risk impacts. Um, and that's where we looked at our risk item, for example. Um, and the COVID-19 case. So really just, you know, just looking at that COVID-19, I like to look at this control effectiveness. Um, we had one that was effective, we had one that was ineffective, and already those task action items can really just keep a good um, eye on that particular item to say, all right, um, this is the item that is overdue and this is something I need to possibly follow up with. How that impacts our entire organization. Um, and in this instance, our risk impact was high. I can actually take that out in relation to how this actually plays out different risks in the organization as well. So, and that will take just one second to load, but you can definitely see um, how that actually works in the rest of the organization in terms of COVID-19, fire test or severe injury or whatever the case may be. Um, so, yeah. Um, if I look at, and I just do my last summary of, um, of today, um, it's really just um, taking the, the very big topic or the big event that was COVID-19 and just taking it and breaking, up, breaking it up into its smaller pieces from a moment of sheer panic um, to a moment of where um, we start to get control of um, the particular item um, and having it to like Lexus GRC just assists you in terms of um, putting all of those pieces in its right, you know, uh, putting all those pieces of the puzzle in its right place and, and being able to track and monitor it um, and making the right decisions around um, the triggers. So hopefully um, I've moved that mark for you, you know, from, from that previous quote. Um, from Mr. Burns to the to the effect of where, as much as the best laid plans of men and mice go awry, um, we can look forward to um, you know to to light at the end of the tunnel, and that really is uh, just by us putting the pieces back together at the end of the day and and working through it systematically. Over to you, Bosman. Uh, thank you, Natasha. And yeah, thank you for, for giving us that uh, uh, detailed overview. <clears throat> and obviously, there's a lot more, I guess, that you could have gone through, but we, we have so much time uh, for that detailed overview on um, COVID-19. Something that we, I think most of us is, is well educated on <laughs> by now. Um, after about eight plus months, you know, we've learned so much. And um, I think we managed to, to, to cut out a lot of the uh, fake news and, and, and most people has got some real information um, over this period of time. Um, but yeah, COVID-19 is with us and it's here to stay. And uh, as we understand, I mean, there's even, uh, I think everybody knows this talks about a second wave, um, but we need to be prepared. And I think that's why we have um, BCM, Business Continuity Management. And um, in the last uh, couple of months, I've never seen something uh, getting up uh, to the boardroom level so quickly, you know, compared to any other topics. Um, it is something on everybody's minds and, and not, not just uh, on the social level, but also in companies and boardrooms and exco. So um, it's really something that a lot of organizations has taken to heart and prepared 
what um, I understand that you went through is um, just highlighting how important it is to actually keep record of all of these things. And um, there's various means, I mean, incidents, uh, we need to report when, uh, when somebody has been identified uh, with, with COVID. Uh, most organizations have got registers and um, means of, of measuring temperature and so forth. But all of these records can be pulled together and give us a consolidated view of, of, of how prepared we are and how, um, how um, good we are in terms of managing continuity. So um, thank you for that. Just in terms of questions and answers, we are actually, I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky, but <laughs> um, we, we have almost run out of time. There's no questions today. So um, yeah, I thought just a couple of keynotes. Uh, COVID is with us. We all understand it. We, um, uh, uh, business continuity management has, has moved up the ranks in the organization very quickly in most organizations that I know of and, and, and people that I speak to. And um, we need to manage that. And what we're basically saying here is that um, these are the means and, and the tools and the solutions to actually get it all together from incidents that are being reported to identifying where your areas of risk are, because each and every company has got a different kind of setup, um, about different sectors. Um, manufacturing is different from uh, um, your, your financial sector. So obviously the controls would be different as well. Um, and so in summary, I think you highlighted that quite clearly. Here's a means of how you can bring it all together and manage your business continuity, continuity um, effectively. Um, there's another two minutes uh, for you if you need to, um, if you can complete the, the polls. Um, just lastly from me, um, thank you for, for joining us today and um, uh, stay safe during this uh, festive season. I know there are talks of certain areas that may be, um, where, where, may, where, where further restrictions may be imposed. So uh, just be on the lookout. Um, keep your safe distance, uh, use your masks, and uh, stay safe during these festive times. And um, yeah, go well, and uh, if all goes well uh, and everybody's safe, hopefully we'll see all of you and your colleagues again um, late in January. Thank you for your time, stay safe, and go well.